what I'm expecting on Saturday is to like to understand science more and to to believe in it. But I just want to understand like why do people come up with facts like why do you even call it a fact like I want to know. On Saturday I'm expecting to learn more on science because I'm obsessed with science. <laughs> People are persuaded, not just by evidence, and sometimes not at all by evidence, but by two other things. One is the credibility of a speaker, and the third is the appeal to emotions. It's not that we need to get the evidence better in a way, it's, it doesn't matter how good the evidence is, people are going to ignore it because what they're after is an overarching story that gives them a sense of identity, that makes them feel part of a movement, uh, and People are ignoring the evidence. You'll see a parent or a politician going up against a researcher, and the researcher has all the answers, has all the evidence, has everything is completely backing them. And all it takes is a very compelling story to completely dismantle all of that. We don't just need to confront false evidence. We need to create a grand narrative of the evidence in context, we need to confront it as part of a story, as part of a social movement. And it's the creating the social movement bit that I want to get across in my talk. Leon Festinger in the 1950s designed the theory of cognitive dissonance, really explaining what um, this means, that um, people tend to follow their own beliefs. They would deny or not accept information that doesn't fit into their bubbles. I would like scientists to work with us and experts and to take our calls and take the time to explain concepts that may be um, everyday for them, but to explain that to the public, to um, give us insight behind the scenes of how they arrive at the evidence. Science does amazing things. It saves lives. It brings us, to the, brings us into outer space. It's behind everything. And we really need to be actively telling those stories and making sure that we combat the kind of compelling emotional story that comes from the other side with the same perspective from science and research. We can't be scientists sitting in our rooms doing our science. We need to engage with people in the real world. It depends on the, the person, the scientists involved, what techniques they want to use to disseminate their message. But um, for some, it may be to speak through an intermediary, like a journalist. Um, other people are more bold and set up their own blogs. Um, I follow a few scientists and some of them are really witty and they get to the gist of it and they describe it in delightful ways. So yeah, to set up your own blog or even just tweet or Facebook about it, that'd be a wonderful start. It's not enough to just be doing the research. You have to, uh, the final step needs to be bringing it to the community and having people engage and invest in science so that both scientists and the general community are actively advocating for that evidence to be implemented. Mobilizing people as a community to advocate has a lot of power. We do need good evidence, and I would never want to put aside the, the need for good evidence, but we also need to focus much more on uh, speaking for the evidence. Evidence doesn't speak for itself. If you don't ride the tiger of social media, it's going to ride you. Scientists can't do it by themselves and the only way to involve the wider community in our advocacy and activism is by making sure that science is compelling and is told in a way that brings the world into the conversation. It's very important to educate the younger people how to deal with the information properly, how to um, learn critical thinking. 